Good morning. The three parts of witnessing. Movement, action, and faith. Action. Please get your authorized version of the scripture. Please follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures that we will be looking at today, okay? Follow me along, check me out, keep me accountable. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Be a Berean and search the scriptures along with me, okay? Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Matthew chapter 14. Verses 22 on to verse 33 is what we are going to be reading to start. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him onto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a high mountain, into a mountain apart to pray. Excuse me. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. Now they, the disciples, were in the ship. Where was the Lord? He wasn't there yet. But within the ship, a stable ship that they were in, the wind was contrary. And what does that verse say? But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed, going this way and that way. Oh, I bet uh, you talk about some seasickness. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went on to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. Now, let's keep in mind, okay? Jesus was walking on the sea. Jesus walked on the water, okay? He was walking on the sea. And the disciples saw him, it's like, whoa, it's a spirit. No, and the Lord's like, hey, chill, it's me. Don't worry, don't be afraid, okay? The wind was still contrary at this time. The ship's still being tossed, okay? And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water, unto thee on the water. And Peter, of course, the um, epitome of the Jew, the, the epitome of the Jew, the Hebrew. Uh, the Jews require a sign, okay? If it's you, let me come out to you and walk on the water also. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Now, the ship, as we have already seen, was being tossed because the winds were contrary. But see, within that ship, they were still safe, weren't they? Even though it was being tossed, okay? And they saw the Lord coming, all right? And Peter, because the Jews require a sign, <laughs> Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. Because the Jews require a sign. And, and he said, come. Said, come on. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he got out of the ship. He got out of that safe environment of the ship. While the ship was being tossed, the wind was contrary. But yet within that ship, he was rooted. He was safe, more or less. But he got out of the ship when the wind was contrary, okay? 
while the ship was being tossed. Contrary. Let me come out to you. And the Lord says, come. So think about that. When Peter actually got out of the ship, okay? It wasn't a calm, lucid, peaceful little thing. No, it was a mist tossing, contrary winds, wasn't it? And when he said, come, the Lord said, come. Peter got out of the boat, got out of the ship. And, you know, like when a baby, when a baby's learning how to walk, you know, and I've seen this with um, my own family and even with myself, too. I don't have kids, but with like the, my nephews and nieces that I used to babysit. OK, uh, you know, getting a baby to or a child to start walking. The, the father will be over there, the mother and the father or mother will be like, OK, go. And that child has his or her focus on their father or mother that is at, you know, that they're walking to. Those of you who have children, you know what I'm talking about, right? But that child is like, okay, you know, wobbling and this kind of stuff. But they're starting out. They start walking. They get out the boat. Because on the floor, you know, crawling around, hey, you're comfortable on the floor, right? You got firmness. But see, you got to stand. You got to start walking. Got to get out of the ship. And when Peter got out of that ship, okay, but when he, okay, and he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. So that tells us what? That his focus was where? On Jesus Christ. His eye, he, his eye was single, focused on Jesus Christ, obviously. Okay? That caused him to get out of the boat. Okay? But, verse 30, when he saw the wind boisterous, stop, tunnel vision, narrow-minded, focused eyes set right on Jesus Christ, you get out of the boat. set. Then the wind's boisterous, okay? But when he saw the wind boisterous, okay, his when he got out of the boat to go to Jesus, focus. Narrow. But when he saw the wind boisterous, how did he see the wind boisterous? He obviously turned his attention away from the Lord. Hmm? And focused changed his focus onto the wind that was boisterous. But when he saw that saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. It didn't say it wasn't like he's walking oh boy on the on the sea, okay? Eyes focused on Jesus. It's like I'm doing it. Praise you Lord, I'm doing what's Boom, and then fall, right, like a stone. No, 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 no. And beginning to sink, going down slowly. See, it would be, you know, if someone were to fall like a stone, right, quick and easy. But it's a sinking. It's a sinking. Hmm. Kind of like that Titanic that the Jesuit order sank. Okay? But he started to sink. Okay, slowly saying. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. Okay? So, now keep this in, in your perspective. Okay? The ship was in the sea, and it was tossed, because the wind was contrary. But yet, they were in that ship. They were all right. But yet, things were contrary, because it was being tossed. Okay? I can only imagine what kind of vomiting and seasickness was going on, then again, these were avid fishermen. I get that. Okay, They see the Lord. Peter the Jew. The ultimate Jew. The ultimate Hebrew. <laughs> if that's you, Lord, let me come out. Bid me come out to you. And the Lord's like, come. Gets out of that boat. You know, gets out the boat. Out of the safety of the boat. 
Even though that boat was in the midst of the sea, being tossed because the wind was contrary, yet he's still under those conditions, brethren. You got to keep that in mind. Under those conditions. Tossed and boisterous. But when he gets out, dead on focused. But what happened? That wind, that wind, the mighty wind. Okay? <laughs> yeah, break like the wind, right? <laughs> yeah. What happened? That wind's boisterous. Diverted his attention from the narrow-mindedness, from that narrow vision, and he saw the wind. Okay? Because what does it say? He saw the wind boisterous. He began to sink slowly, go down, because his eye, because his focus was being diverted from Jesus. And he beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. All his focus got back as soon as he started to sink, didn't it? Hmm? Didn't it? Like the little baby or the little child walking, almost about to fall, and, and that look on their face, like, oh, and you want to go like that. And you do go like that. It's like, oh, 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 okay. Right? Verse 31. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And this, uh, the thing of faith we will address, Lord willing, uh, in the video on Friday. Lord willing. Okay? And when they were come into the ship, they, note the they, and when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Verse uh, 32 here is very important because it tells us what? It tells us that Throughout this whole little thing that was going on here, the wind was boisterous. The wind was contrary. Okay? The conditions were rocky. Okay? It wasn't this smooth, lucid, calm, serene thing. No. It was troubled. It was agitated. It was boisterous. It was contrary. The, the ship was tossed. And within that ship, they were safe. They had, you have no inclination here in scripture that the ship itself was not seaworthy okay but see that's the the focus of this here is two being in a ship but getting out of the ship under the conditions the circumstances that were not commodities to come out into but yet Peter walked on the water to go to Jesus. But the minute he turned his attention away and got distracted by the distraction of the wind that was boisterous, he began to sink. And then right away, as he, soon as he started to sink, what happened? Lord, save me! His, his attention got <clears throat> right back to where it needed to be, didn't it? Hmm? Hmm? And then some of you wonder, uh, my brothers and sisters, why things, certain things might happen to you? Have you gotten your focus away from whose focus it needs to be upon? Okay? So we know that during this entire time that the wind was contrary, boisterous. Okay? And when they, they, who's the they? Obviously, Peter and God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Isn't that interesting? And let's finish this off with verse 33. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying of a truth, Thou art the Son of God. Amen. Amen. And again, where the Lord, you know, and, and uh, other passages, well, he was asleep on the pillow. Okay? Well, he was asleep. They're like, Lord, the ship is going to sink. Save us. And he's like, oh, what? Oh, you can Cease, be still. And the sea went calm. You want to talk about something that's, that was probably very fearful. Okay, but with the sea, I, I've never been on the sea like that, so I don't know what it's like. Okay, but uh, you know, you've seen enough Discovery Channel kind of things, right? 
when you were lost, or uh, how, how these big boats with these crazy guys, and God bless their hearts and souls, who will get on these ships, and you see the ships hit these big waves and these waves, and it's like, wow, man, you you know, I'd rather be shot in the head than go out on one of them things, brother, sister, okay? I hate boats. I hate boats, okay? Remember, the Jesuits sank the Titanic, okay? All right? <laughs> All right? But, okay, the sea was crazy. The Lord gets up and when he waking off of the pillow, it's like, come be still. Then again, he says, where's your faith? Where's your faith? Like I said, more on that in the other video. But in this video, Peter got out of the ship. He got out of the ship under conditions that were crazy. Not favorable. Not calm. Not serene. Not lucid. But under what? Okay. Verse 24. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. Okay. And of course... Verse 30, but when he saw the wind was wind boisterous, okay, not perfect conditions. See, when the Lord calls you, okay, and you answer that call, going the way of the cross, and he saves you when you come to him on his terms and his conditions, and he saves you. He doesn't call you to remain in the boat. He calls you to get out there and to make known him amongst the lost. Go to Ephesians chapter 2 now. Okay? Ephesians chapter 2. And when you where when you talk about this thing of action. Now, uh, you if you didn't see the first video, uh, movement and action. You'll say, well, they're the same thing. As we, uh, as we clearly show in the first video, what is the wind that is driving that sail? You look that way, you know, in Matthew chapter 14, okay, the wind was what? Contrary and boisterous, right? And the ship was tossed. And when the Lord got into the ship, there was a calm, right? Okay? So that wind that was driving that ship wasn't the wind guiding the sail that was of the Lord, was it? See, and we addressed this in the first video. What is the what wind is pushing that sail? We addressed this in the first video about movement. Check that out. That will be in the description box, okay? Movement. Is it the Lord that it with, you know, pushing that sail? Or is it the flatulence of men? Hmm? Is it the breath of man that is moving it? Like I said, we addressed that in the first video. But, okay, but you can, and then, like, I've, I, like I believe I said in the previous video, these videos are not about your salvation, okay? There will be in the description box, of course, a video where you and I can reason together through the scriptures about whether or not you're saved, okay? That will be in the description box. But these videos are for you, my brothers and sisters, to get off your duff. Don't be afraid. Go as the Lord guides you and be that witness. Do, do for the Lord. Not to save yourself, not to say, stay saved. See, and this is where the easy believism devil likes to come in and wreak all kinds of havoc. Because what do they say? What do you say, my dear friend? Prayer is a work. Repentance is a work. Calling on the name of the Lord is the work. So praying, <laughs> repentance, and calling. Things that are there in true salvation are works. But yet you saving yourself by you just flipping a switch, you know, walking along. Okay, I believe now, so I'm saved. But see, the easy believism heretic will come in when you start talking about action. Action. These works. Okay? They come around and say, oh, you're preaching work salvation. <laughs> Shut up. No. No. Hey. Hey. 
even my enemies. You can't accuse me of work salvation. There's no way. Come on. Come on. I know you hate me, and I ain't crazy about you either, but come on. Come on. You know I do not preach to you work salvation. Okay? What are these works, though? Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 on to verse 10. Okay? For by grace, his grace, are ye saved through faith. Our answer to God's grace is our faith. Faith in what? It is finished. Okay? And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Okay? Not of yourselves. You don't save yourself all of a sudden because you just believe. Okay? Belief is an integral part to salvation. Yes. But how you come to that belief. That's where the easy believism heretic likes to do jump rope. Hop over a lot of things. And go right to the belief. Okay? Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Okay? But, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now see, when they come to verse 9, well, what is a work? You read there, then the easy believism heretic likes to cut apart, uh, hack in pieces, portions of Romans chapter 3, omitting the, uh, the lead up to their favorite parts of Romans chapter 3, which is between what? Uh, verses 20 and 26, where they, they say that's a pure gospel. But see, they like to jump over uh, Romans chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 18, okay? Which leads on to true belief, okay? <laughs> All right? Being broken, okay? Having fear of the Lord and contrition, that kind of stuff. They like to omit that. Uh, but see, the works... The works that Paul is talking about are reference to the works of the law. Okay? That's the works that he is referencing to, referring on to. All right? Not of works, lest any man should boast. Why? Because if you keep the law, right? You have some. Well, I, 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 I keep the Shabbat. Uh, oh, I went and had communion today. Okay, or I went to confession. I do this, this, this. Okay, you have something to boast about. Okay. All right. The works are the works of the law that he's referring to there, dear friend. Okay. Now, okay. Verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus on two on to good works. Okay, now stop right there in this verse. For we are his workmanship. His workmanship. He makes us a new creature. You don't make yourself anything except a heretic by saying, well, I'm saved because I just believed. See, it's, it's, it's so crazy. Okay, the easy believer, some heretic will tell you, prayer is a work. Repentance is a work, and calling on the name of the Lord is a work. No, it's not. No, it isn't. But yet, they go around, turn around and say right away, just believe. So you are saving yourself by your belief. <laughs> Thankfully, though, and I've, I've encountered some of these atheists who, who rightly, it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. This just believe thing that you're saying doesn't make sense. Okay, but see what's the contrary also to that? That you got to give up X, Y, Z. You got to clean up your life first, like a lot of the Calvinists teach. Okay, but then again, they're elect, so it doesn't matter anyway, right? See, we are His workmanship, new creatures in Christ. Okay, He creates us a new creature. Okay. He makes us a new creature. Behold, he makes all things new. All things are passed away, okay? You are still going to struggle with this sagging skin suit. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. But he makes you a new creature, okay? So we are his workmanship. 
When you say that you save yourself, that you're saved because I just believe, you're your own workmanship. I do have a little bit, a little bit of respect for certain easy believism heretics. At least with for some of those who don't try to hide it. Okay, those those guys. Hey, you're a heretic. You're leading people to hell. <laughs> Good luck at the great white throne of judgment. But at least they're not trying to hide it. There are those out there who are easy believism heretic devils and try to hide it. Okay, got those. Ugh. But but there again. Okay, there again. Okay, you save yourself by you just believing, omitting brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord, which leads you to call on his name out of the terror of the Lord. Okay, You're, you, you are your own workmanship. Okay, you are no better than heretics like Mark the Messenger who are saving themselves by keeping the law, which you don't have to do today. Okay. All right, we are his workmanship, okay? For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus onto good works. Good works. What is good? There's only one good. That is who? God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the only one who is good. And what is good? His word, the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? There is none good but one. That is God. Okay? Good works. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. There are, unfortunately, there are those people who are actually saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, who do not walk in these good works, who do not do anything according to scripture. They're going to go to heaven, but the Lord's going to be ashamed of them for all eternity. With, that's better than being in hell. Absolutely. Absolutely. But see, that shows something that your heart isn't truly doesn't belong to the Lord because you still have that vestige of you because you want to live like the lost world. That's what it is. Then these people come up with the, well, don't judge, you're judging. Oh, shut up! Every time, brethren, Every time someone says, don't judge, every single time without exception, it's to justify their sins, okay? Okay? But see, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus onto good works. Good works. Being ambassadors for him. Living the scriptures. For those to see, to be a living example of his grace, which he saved you by. Okay? He does not call you to inactivity, dear brother, sister. Okay? Now, go to, let's look at some Old Testament examples here. Go to Isaiah chapter 6. One of these days, Lord willing, Lord willing, one of these days, the Lord hopefully will guide me on to a expository video on Isaiah chapter 6. If I haven't, if he hasn't already. Uh, so much here. This could be, a, like this video, could be a, easily a three-hour opus. Okay? But <laughs> Isaiah chapter 6, verses 5 on to verse 10. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. Isaiah knew, okay? He uh, understood. I'm nothing, okay? All my righteousnesses are menstrual cloths, filthy rags, okay? And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts, okay? And this also is very telling unto the Jew when, at the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with us who go up with him, okay? Uh, this is very telling because they're going to see the Lord. It's like, wow, wow. Okay, let's continue. Then flew one of the seraphims, excuse me, onto me, 
having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched, my, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sins are purged. Okay? Got to also remember that during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's going to be faith and works. Okay? And in the kingdom of heaven, it's going to be all works. Okay? And this was written under the law, the dispensation of the law, which was <laughs> faith and works. Okay? This is instruction and righteousness while we are looking at this. Okay? Let's continue. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Here am I, send me. I say it's like, send me. He was cleansed. He, he knew that he was nothing. He was cleansed and willing to go. His the Lord's workmanship. Okay? Cleanse that live coal, okay? We are washed, uh, uh, saved by the blood of the crucified one, okay? We're washed. Our sins are washed away in the blood of Jesus Christ, okay? He calls us the way of the cross. We die to ourselves, okay? We have that contrition. It's my fault that he went to the cross. And oh boy, unless he saved you, he's going to send you to hell. Better be afraid of the Lord. Better fear him. Then you call upon his name and he saves you. He seals you. Now what? Okay, he saves you. Here I am, send me. Send me. Okay, verse 9. And he said, go. And tell the people, hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. And, and we addressed this a little in the previous video. More often than not, it seems that when the Lord sends us out because he is the wind in our sail and we act upon that movement, which is the Lord himself. We act upon it. We get out of the boat. It more often than not seems to fail, doesn't it? Doesn't it? You know, a uh, dear brother of ours from Croatia um, check the video, uh, the previous video, uh, comments, such an encouraging, I pinned it, such an encouragement. Uh, that's a brother, our brother from Croatia, who gets this perfectly, who understands what we're talking about today perfectly. He really does, okay? There are those of you out there who get this. Not all of you do. Now, unfortunately, there are some of you, my brothers and sisters, that sit there on your duff and make excuses all day. Yeah. That ship's going down, brother, sister. We got to be in the rear, shoveling coal to those uh, boilers to keep the lights going for as long as the Lord says. Okay? But like I said, check out the comment that the brother left in the previous video. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay? I, I never got busted like handcuffs or brought to a police station because of my witness. He has. Okay? Okay? So, but let, let's continue. Let's continue. Brother, that was beautiful. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay? Verse 10. Make the heart of this people fat. Fat. Overload, in a way. You know? You got to be careful with that, because in witnessing, you don't beat them over the head with, uh, with the scriptures and try to cram the sandwich down their mouth all at once. You don't do that. I've made that mistake before, many times before in the past, and there are consequences to that. They, they, people go deer in the headlights look, kind of like Mark the Messenger constantly looks like. Okay, get that deer in the headlights look, and you lose that moment because you're trying to cram. No, what this is talking about is consistency. Not in a moment of witnessing, you try to take the entire sandwich and cram it down their throat. You don't do that. You give them little morsels. This is talking about consistency. Consistency. Make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy. Okay? It's not that you are uh, trying to level a sermon on them in witnessing. You give them little morsels. Okay? That's how that works. What this is talking about is being a consistent Persistent witness. Consistency. You know? Consistent. You see the same guy uh, twice a day. It's like, hey, hope you get saved. 
Uh, can I offer you a gospel track? No. Twice a day you do that. And you continue to do that. Okay? Unless the Lord's like, you know, you're casting your pearls before swine, that kind of thing. And that's see, what is the movement, what is the wind that is guiding that sail? Okay? All right? All right? You got to watch the first video. Okay? But this is talking about a consistency in your witness, in your testimony. Okay? Consistency. Make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. And, uh, and on this, Jeremiah, go to the uh, book of Jeremiah. Okay? What is he talking about? What is he talking about? Because God will have all men everywhere to repent. Okay? And get saved. Okay? Calvinist, there's your doctrine right blown out of the water. Okay? But Jeremiah chapter 5, just uh, verses 21 on to verse 23. What is he talking about? What is he talking about? Why is it making the, the, uh, that they won't hear? What, what does that mean? Jeremiah chapter 5, verses 21 on to verse 23. Hear now this, O oh foolish people. Foolish people. People who believe in the a fool is one who believes in their heart who says in their heart excuse me that there is no god they won't say it with their lips okay they profess that they know god but in works they deny him oh boy okay in works they deny him okay so hear that now this oh foolish people behaving acting working if you will as if you say in there in your heart there is no god that's what it means to be foolish okay hear now this O oh, foolish people and without departing from evil without understanding ah unto the one we are the savor of life and unto the other the savor of death okay okay which have eyes and see not. Which have ears and hear not. Why is that? Because they are foolish and without understanding. They fear men. The wind that is in their sails is the flatulence of men. And no marvel either because Satan savors the things that be of man, not of God. Okay, and remember Satan in the garden, he was cursed to be uh, eat dust all the days of his life. We're dust, hello, okay? Fear ye not me. <laughs> Obviously not. Obviously not. Okay? Seth the Lord, will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea? by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass. And though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail. Though they roar, yet can they not pass it. Verse 23. But this people hath a revolting and rebellious heart they are revolted and gone. That's what, the, the, that's what that means. And in Jeremiah chapter 6, just one verse, verse 10. The Lord's saying here, um, To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it, but they want to have people... Itch their ears, speak smooth things onto them. Speak like a dragon. Okay? Then you might be saying, well, why witness? Uh, we are called onto good works. Okay? That type of mentality, think about this now. Think about this, okay? Think about this. The Lord knew that the children of Israel were going to reject the kingdom of heaven offered to them within the first, uh, in the gospel accounts before the death, burial, and resurrection, okay? It's prophesied in scriptures that the Jew was going to reject the, both the kingdom of heaven and the gospel, okay? It was prophesied, absolutely. But yet, 
the Lord still went and offered. Okay? He still did. All right? God is fair. God is just. Even though, brethren, sisters, even though probably safe to say eight out of ten people that you're going to encounter in witnessing in whatever it is that the Lord has uh, called you to, to do, okay, whatever it is, whether it's this, making videos, tracting, uh, just doing whatever, okay, whatever it is, roughly, and this does depend on demographic, yes it does, but roughly, okay, seven out of ten people that you're going to meet nowadays probably line up pretty perfectly with what we looked at in Jeremiah. They're gone, okay? But see, still, that witness that we are witnessing onto them is a witness of accountability, okay? Think about that, okay? Think about, your labor is not in vain in the Lord, brother. See, and therein comes in with the stupidity of these hyper-Calvinists, okay? Incidentally, when you think of hyper, what do you think of? Right? Hyper-Calvinism. What is hyper-Calvinism? Hyper-Calvinism goes to the absolute extreme. Uh, like R.C., Roman Catholic Sproul. He was a uh, hyper-Calvinist. So, okay. Why pray? God, it's already foreordained. God already knows what you need. Why pray? The easy believers and heretics have a variation of this. It's like, if you're going to pray anything, just praise the Lord saying, hey, thank you for saving a superstar like me because I just believed on you. Thank you. I was such a catch. That's a variation of that thing. And isn't it interesting? A lot of these easy believism heretics claim to be dispensational. They're actually hyper dispensationalists. Okay. But, and, and you easy believism devils who watch me, will you stop? Please stop calling yourself dispensational. You're not. Because what do you say? You say that it's faith alone from Genesis onto Revelation. And the very first dispensation proves you wrong at, at out the gate. Okay? God's grace is in every dispensation or else we go up like a puff. Okay? What changes in the dispensation people... Forgive this rabbit trail. What changes in the dispensation people is how God deals with man salvifically. That's what changes. And that's what the hyper dispensationalist doesn't believe. Okay? So you, you easily believe in some devils? Stop that. You're not dispensational. Okay? You're not. Because salvation to you, like you, you say it yourself, it's just belief from Genesis to Revelation. That's not being dispensational. Stop. Okay? Stop. You're not dispensational. You're not. You're not. Okay? You're not. Stop. Okay? But see, the, the hyper-Calvinists, okay? Sorry for that little rabbit trail. Okay? The hyper-Calvinists are, well, you don't even need to pray. Okay, you don't even need, you don't even know you need to go out there to witness. Why? Because it's already preordained, elect and non-elect. So, hey, so, so then what? Uh, reading the word of God, the scriptures, and hearing uh, godly preaching is just for what? Your entertainment? No, no. See, there is witnessing to, um, that we do, uh, being uh, ambassadors for Christ, for those to be used as witness to bring people unto the Lord that he will bring unto himself through you, a vessel meet for his use, or for a witness against people. So when they get to the great white throne of judgment, see, God's not going to leave anybody without a witness. They ain't, gonna, they, they ain't one innocent person in hell. And at the great white throne of judgment, where the lost people are going to give an account of themselves, okay, um, there isn't going to be one single solitary soul at the great white throne of judgment who is not going to say, you didn't give me a witness. It ain't going to happen like that. Okay? See, one, the savor of life or the savor of death. Okay? If they will hear, great. If they will forbear, they're going to, that's accountability witnessing. 
okay? Accountability witnessing. See, that's what talked about in Isaiah chapter 6. Persistence. Consistency. Okay? Consistent. Persistent. Okay? You got to remember, brethren. Yes, there comes a time when you're casting your pearls before swine. Absolutely. There, there, there comes a time where it's like, okay, don't, don't even bother witnessing to these people. They've been made accountable by your witness already. Go on to the next one. That's it. Okay, that happens. But you got to remember, okay, it's never in vain. Okay, you don't know how, you're, how our Lord is going to use that witness of yours, of his. Excuse me. Excuse me. There, that. That one was for you, okay? Uh, from you, okay? But his witness that he gives through you, you don't know how he's going to use it for his glory, okay? Whether it be to make those who are just like this, what? In uh, Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 10, To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. I give an account. Like that guy who slapped the tracks out of my hand. Hey man, you've been given a you've been given witness, you've been given testimony. Okay, granted, the guy was bigger than me, but you know, a quick kick in the stones, they're going down. Okay? Beg your pardon for that. But okay, hey. It's like, okay, man. <laughs> Pick up my tracks. It's like, all right. You're gonna be held accountable. You're gonna give an account of yourself. Okay? Alright. So this thing of, well, what good is my way? You don't know. It's, it's either uh, you're going to either be that bird under the saddle that the Lord's going to use to maybe break someone to come to him or someone to nail that hand, that nail into the coffin for an accountability. Okay? You got it? Now let's continue. Go to Isaiah chapter 41. Okay? Isaiah chapter 41, verses 10 on to verse 14. Isaiah chapter 41, verses 10 on to verse 14. Now remember, like we spoke about in the previous video, okay? What is the wind that is pushing that sail? Is it the breath of the Lord, or is it the flatulence of flesh? The flatulence of man, okay? These Christians in the buildings, these like the Jehos and the Morons, Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons, okay, and some of these black Hebrew Israelites and some of these serpent seed uh, British Hebrew Israelite people, okay, they're being directed by the wind of men, the flatulence of man, and it stinks, okay? They're very, the enemies are very busy, and where are we? Fighting amongst ourselves over things. Isaiah chapter 41, verses 10 and verse 14, okay? If, the, if you're saved, born again, converted, you got to get out of that boat, brother, sister. The Lord is the wind that is pushing that sail. We talked about this in the previous video, okay? But this is what, okay, check this out. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Right hand, synonymous with our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's who lives within you, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit, okay? Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. Confounded. Maybe not right now. Not now, probably. Most likely not right now. But eventually. When they're at the great white throne of judgment, the Lord's like, I sent you my witness and you rejected it. Okay? Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. And they that strive with thee shall perish. Okay? Thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them. Even them that contend with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. Or right now, today, it doesn't seem that way, does it? The enemies are coming out of the woodwork from places where you wouldn't even expect. They are tireless because this is their hour and the power of darkness. This is their time. Like in the comment section of the previous video, uh, you know, yeah, this is their time. This is their hour. Absolutely. Absolutely. But see, that's not having the eternal perspective. 
We need to be eternally minded, brethren. Okay? All right? These, these devils that are so loud, that have over 100 channels to themselves and attack on multiple channels to overwrite this devilish algorithm here, okay? They're, they're going to be, they're, they're nothing. You're nothing. All your stuff is going to be brought to naught because you operate in the realm of flesh by the flatulence of man, okay? Wouldn't know anything unless your master defecated it upon you. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 13. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. We'll talk more about this in the next video. Okay? Fear not, thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel, I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Yes. If the if it is the Lord who's making it, if the Lord is the one who's guiding that sail, it's going to serve his purpose. Whether to hold someone accountable uh, for them at the great white throne of judgment or to be that raw pricking in the heart. Again, look at Acts chapter 2. They were pricked in the heart and saying, men and brethren, what shall we do? Acts chapter 7, Stephen <laughs> lashing them to death. Okay. Okay, they were cut to the heart. And what did they do? They stopped their ears and gnashed on them with their teeth and killed them. Okay, they were accountability. You see what I'm saying? Okay, see what I'm saying? Okay, Haggai, Haggai. Oh yeah. Now, you got to remember, brethren, we are looking at Old Testament examples. And under the Old Testament, under the law specifically, it was faith and works. Faith and works. The law was there, okay? This is for our instruction in righteousness. You've got to remember that, okay? But see, these are good in, uh, examples for our instruction in righteousness because they had to put action in there as for to be right with God. We don't have to do that in order to be right with God today. But see, it seems, unfortunately, that for some of you, my dear brethren and sisters, you don't need a pat in the head. You know what you need? You need a boot in the butt. Okay? That's what this is about. You don't need a pat in on the head. You need a foot in the, foot in the butt. Okay? Okay? To get out there. Okay? To get out there. And like we already looked at in Isaiah. Okay, you need to be afraid. You got the Lord in you. The, the most they're going to do is kill you. They can't kill your soul. And if they kill you, guess what? You get to go home and be with the Lord. Okay? And so they make fun of you. Really? Might be a little sensitive to that. So what? So what? I love you. Grow up a little bit with that, okay? Grow up just, just, just a little with that, okay? Just a little, okay? Haggai, chapter 1, verses 2 on to verse 8. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Now remember, this is for a different dispensation. Doctrinally, this does not apply for us. Doctrinally. There are no buildings for us today. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Okay, we've got plenty of videos where we talk about that. But you got to remember, okay? Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lieth waste? And that's what Christianity offers you. You know, your best life now. And to neglect the good works that we are created unto. Okay? But see, when they do their good works, it's that they have themselves as the centerpiece to get people to go to the church building so they get a little pat on the head by their pastor or they do the dirty work of their massa. Okay? And then they reap the consequences of doing the dirty work for their massa. Okay? That their massa himself wouldn't do. Because he knows better. So he uses a little pawn to do it for him. Okay? But see, Christianity, it's your time now. 
Well, what about witnessing? Oh, don't worry about it. God will do what he'll do. If anything, get them here to the building so we can get our, get their money from them. Oh, excuse me. So we can t tell them God loves them. Okay? Nonsense. Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lieth waste? Hmm? Oh, and this house lie waste. Excuse me. Hmm? Is it time for you to take care of yourself and neglect what the Lord has called us on to? Good works, not to be saved, to stay saved. God has not called you to inactivity, brother, sister. Okay? Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have so much, and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages, to put it into a bag of with holes. <laughs> Thus sat the Lord of hosts. Consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it. And I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Now, there are no, today in this dispensation, you got to rightly divide the word of truth, there are no buildings sanctified by God. The only building that is sanctified by God is the uh, building made without hands, our bodies, okay? All right? Because the Lord lives within us, okay? Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, okay? Understand? Okay? But the point is, okay, get out there for our instruction in righteousness. Go up to the mountain. Go to the Lord, okay, and bring wood and build the house. Do the work of a shh, do the work of an evangelist, okay. We the Lord saved us, okay. We're going to heaven. We don't have to work to stay saved or be saved or be right with God, that kind of thing, okay? Because what Paul was talking about in Ephesians chapter two were the works of the law, but he has called us onto good works. Okay? Okay, you with me? Alright? So go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it. And I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Okay. And of course. Uh, what what comes to mind, uh, at least for me, when this was happening, when we were doing this together, putting this at me and the Lord, uh, Philippians 2, verses 3 and 4. But what happens? Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. I brought more people to the church building than you did. I am out there knocking on doors five days a week. What are you doing? Okay. And there were some crazy charismatic, uh, specifically, who accused me of doing that very thing by trying to encourage people to get out there. Okay? All right? Brethren, there are those you need to know that with the Lord, all things are possible. Okay? You needn't be afraid of witnessing. Okay? Like I said, in the previous video, look at that comment that our dear brother from Croatia left. Beautiful. He gets it. He knows it. He gets it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay? But you need to know, brethren. You need to be afraid. This, this is their time. The ship is going down. Where are we? Where are we? They're in abundance. Okay? The Lord has not pulled back his hand yet. If he did, guess what? The church of the living God, the body of Christ, wouldn't be on the earth. Don't give me that. Okay? Don't give me that. All right? But let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Okay? It's not about you. Okay? We, we as the Church of the Living God, we wanted the redemption of the purchased possession to happen about five minutes ago. Don't we? Yes, but it didn't. Why? Because the Lord still has purpose for us here. Okay? He does. Who is the Lord going to save today that wasn't saved yesterday? Okay? And how shall they believe? How shall they know unless someone is sent unto them? 
And how shall I hear without a preacher? And right away you think a preacher, like, you know, someone in a pulpit or someone behind a camera, right? That's not the limit to what a preacher is, dear friend. Okay? All right. And remember, you women, you're not to do that. Okay? There are many other ways that you sisters can be a witness unto the Lord. Like uh, beholding your chaste conversation, okay? Being of a meek and quiet spirit. These women who can shout louder than men, who speak like men, okay? When, like my wife, you know? A meek and quiet spirit, okay? All right? That's a, when most of all women today are big mouth and want to get up in man's faces. Come on, sisters. Come on. All right? Come on. And also, verse 21 here in Philippians chapter 2, which was being addressed in Haggai. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ's. And it won't take you long in witnessing for our Lord Jesus Christ that um, it's not about you. It's not about you. Okay? And if it is about you making you look good, then the Lord is not the one guiding you. Okay? Now, now go back to uh, Haggai. Go back to Haggai. Okay? Go back there. Uh, Haggai 2, verses 4 and 5. Okay? Get out the boat, brother, sister. Okay? The Lord is the wind in your sail. You gotta get out of that boat. He hasn't called you into onto inactivity. Okay? You can't stay in the boat forever. Okay? The, the wind is contrary and boisterous. Okay? The conditions are not going to be perfect how you perceive, but perfect how the Lord wants it to be. Okay? All right? Haggai 2, verses 4 and 5. Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Josedek, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work, for I am with you. Especially today, if you're of the church of the living God, you're sealed unto the day of redemption. Well, you've got to be afraid of a man. Okay? Yeah, work, for I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. According to the word that I covenant with you when ye came out of Egypt. Now, this is a dispensational difference, okay, when he took the Jews out of Egypt. But for we today in this dispensation, for our instruction and in righteousness, we were taken out of what? That, the world. Egypt is a type of the world, okay? So, According to the word that I covenanted with you when ye came out of Egypt, for us today instruction and righteousness, he covenanted it with us how? He sealed us until the day of redemption. We have the Lord within us when he brought us out of the world. Okay? So my spirit remaineth among you. Lowercase s there, dispensational difference, but great, this is great instruction and righteousness. Fear ye not. You're not going to be successful at witnessing. The Lord's going to be successful. You're not. Okay? You're not. I mean, like we spoke about in the previous video. Look at the ministry of Jeremiah. By all immediate purposes, one would say that was a ministry of failure. But we have the testimony in Scripture. It was far from anything such, was it? Was it? What? world, the flesh and the devil, with the wisdom of this world, which is earthly, sensual, and devilish, what they call failure is by a visible number. But see, you got to be eternally minded, dear brethren. Okay? It's about the Lord. And his purpose is being wrought through you for whatever it is, in whatever it is. Okay? All right? Now let's go to the book of Acts. That's, there were so many verses that could be added to this. This, like I said, this video could easily be a three-hour opus. Easily. Easily. Okay? Easily. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, which comes after <laughs> Acts chapter 7, when Jewry officially rejected the gospel, as prophesied in Scripture, but yet the Lord still did it. 
And those people who stoned Stephen, their, their accountability at the great white throne is written for us here as an example, isn't it? Okay. But Acts chapter 8, when the gospel officially went to the Gentiles, okay? All right. Acts chapter 8, verses 26 on to verse 30. All right. Now let's look at this. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, 26 unto 30, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. Okay? So the Lord himself, that's the Lord talking, said to Philip, Go! Come on, go! The wind behind the sail. What did Philip do? Oh, Lord, I don't know. Oh, Lord, this is like Moses, right? What did he do? And he arose and went. Because the Lord was the wind in the sail. See? See? Big difference between someone patting you on the head, love bombing you to death to bring people into a church building. Okay? And he arose and went and beheld a man of Ethiopia. This is the first noted Gentile in this dispensation that received the gospel. Okay? This is the first Gentile. He was an Ethiopian. Guess what? He was a Hamite! So, the very first, I mean, there are these disgusting, you know, black Hebrew Israelites, you know, who just twist scripture but say that the, 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 the Bible is the white man's or whatever. It's like, shut up, you devils. Shut up. Okay? The very first Gentile recorded in Scripture, in this dispensation, that received the gospel after Acts chapter 7, obviously, because until then it was primarily to the Jew, okay, of Shem, okay? It's a Hamite. My dear Hamitic Brethren and sisters, don't ever fall for this disgusting lie that the authorized version is the white man. Stop. Don't. Don't fall for that. And if you're of the Church of the Living God, my Hamitic brethren, my, ha my Hamite brethren and sisters, you already know that. Okay? You already know that. All right? But please. They, the racist ones, are the ones that use the race card. Don't forget that. But, okay? And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia. He was a Hamite. Okay? And eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet. He was reading Isaiah 53, by the way. Then the Spirit, capital S, said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. See how the Lord is guiding Philip step by step? And some want to say, well, the Lord doesn't do that today. Calvinists say that today. Uh, yeah, he does. Okay? Yes, he does. The Lord will guide you in this fashion. Okay? Yes, he will. Okay? Because Philip is not uh, giving testimony unto a Jew, is he? He's doing it unto a Gentile. Right? Okay? Same gospel. Okay, but the, you know, this was this dispensation, but it was to the Jew first and then also to the Greek. Okay, this dispensation, though, saved by grace through faith. Okay, therein lies the wickedness of these ridiculous hyper uh, dispensationalists. Okay, never mind about them. But, okay, so the Spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him. Okay? And heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? Now, on your own time, pause the video, please, and continue and see the appropriate reason why men get baptized. And see, see, you, you read in a Bible like the ESV and or the NIV um, or some or whatever, the New Living Translation, the New Revised Standard Version or something like that. Um, 
Hey, you got an NIV, huh? Read me Acts 8, verse 37 in your NIV. It's not there. Oh, go figure. Because that tells you why you get baptized in this dispensation. Of course, Satan is going to take it out of his book, the Bible. Those are Bibles. Amen. This is the scriptures. Yes, I know it says Holy Bible on it. But see, within the pages, it doesn't say Bible. It says scriptures or the Word of God. Okay? Okay? Satan gives you a Bible. The Lord gives you the scriptures. End of story. Okay? But see, Spirit guided Philip. And Philip acted on that. Okay? Okay? And now, Acts chapter 13, verses 1 on verse 3. Okay? Acts chapter 13, verses 1 on verse 3. Now, there was in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger, and Lucius and Cy of Cyrene and Menaean, which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit, Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, make sure you read the whole chapter, okay? See the context for yourself, okay? The Lord is that spirit. So the Lord, this is the Lord God, our Father, Jesus Christ, okay? The Holy Ghost, okay? The Holy Ghost said, separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. Okay? The work. The work. We are called unto good works. Work that is going to be driven by the Lord himself. That wind in the sail. Okay? But he has called up. He, I don't care who you are, brother, sister. You can't say, well, I can't do it. Shut. I love you. I love you. Shut up. Okay? Shut up. There is something that you can do for our Lord Jesus Christ that he has called you specifically for. It might not be this. might not be that. But it's something. Okay? It's something. You have been called to something. Okay? You and the Lord knows what it is. All right? Do it. Okay? Time is running out. Okay? Time is running out. All right? And when they had prayed, and when they had fasted and prayed, they and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. They went away to do the work. And also, a uh, cross-reference here in Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26, verses 15 on to verse 29. Paul, before uh, Agrippa, I believe it is. Yes, before King Agrippa. He was giving, uh, retelling his testimony of when the Lord saved him on the Damascus Road. Okay? Verses 15 on to verse 29. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee, okay, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. And I miswrote here. We're not reading to verse 29. We're reading to verse uh, 20. Uh, I don't know why I wrote down 29. We're reading to verse 20. Okay. We're reading to verse 20. Sorry for that. I wrote down 29. We don't. Go ahead and read to 29 if you want. For, for what we want to get across, we only need to go to verse 20. Forgive me, okay? Yes. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but shoot first unto them out of Damascus and at Jerusalem, 
and throughout all the coasts of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. And see, the easy believers of heretic will come to this and uh, say, well, hey, he's, you know, you, uh, you, like talking about someone like me, you're saying that that means uh, works to be saved. Works meet for repentance. Works that come from you being saved, born again, converted by our Lord Jesus Christ because you came to him on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him you called upon his name. The works meet for repentance uh, is what? You shooing these good works because you are saved. Okay? That's what that means. This doesn't, this doesn't mean at all that you today in this dispensation that you have to do works to save yourself. No. Those works, as we read in Ephesians chapter 2, we have been called unto good works, dear brethren. Those are the works meet for repentance. The works that come from you being made a new creature in Christ. Going out there and being a witness in whatever capacity it is that the Lord has called you on to. Not sitting on your duff doing nothing. Okay? That's what that means. Works meet for repentance. You have the Lord in you. The works meet for repentance. Whether it's this, passing out tracts, whatever it is. Whatever it is. You've been called to do something. Do something! Don't tell me the Lord hasn't guided you onto anything. Brother, sister, stop lying to yourself. Okay? Stop it. The Lord has called you to do something. Get out the boat. It's, it's never going to be a lucid thing. Okay? It's not. And if it is, you need to examine yourself. If anyone comes to you, it's like, well, the more I witness, the easier it gets. Really. The more we witness, the harder it gets. Why? Because the harder the hearts of the people get. But you got some people, oh, the more I do it, the easier. Uh, the wind that is driving you stinks. I liken it onto the flatulence of man, not the breath of the Lord. Okay? All right? And now go to First Timothy Chapter 1, 1 Timothy chapter 1. Got to get out there, brother, sister. Okay? As the Lord guides. Okay? We talked about that in movement. Okay? 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 on verse 17. And I, this is Paul talking about, okay? Paul, who is our example, okay? Of how we are to live within this dispensation. Okay? And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. And we're all in the ministry of reconciliation, by the way, brethren. Okay? Who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor, and injurious, but I attained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. And one of my favorite verses in scriptures. For this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. How be it? For this cause I obtain mercy. Think about this. And witnessing, it's like, hey man, I used to be like you. Uh, when I've got the chance to witness to the sodomites, it's like, hey, man, I used to be one of you. I used to be like that. But the Lord had mercy on me and saved me because he broke me. And I came to him in fear, having contrition. He saved me. He can save you. Okay? Albeit for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all long suffering. For a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Pattern, what does that mean? In witnessing, hey, if the Lord saved me, a sinner who is chief, 
What, are you too good that he can't save you, huh? Oh, you must be something pretty special where the Lord who created the heaven and the earth can't save you? Hmm, yeah. But see, what happens? People go past the line of no return. People will have their heart hardened where they don't want to be saved. But they want that, that son of perdition. The son of perdition, which they're being preached to in the church buildings. Not the Christ of the scriptures, but that son of perdition. You know, that's who's being preached in the church buildings, by the way. Okay. Now, unto the king eternal. Eternal. Immortal. Invisible. The only wise God. Be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And of course, 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 on of verse 12. Brethren, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Don't be ashamed of it. What testimony is that? He saved you. He saved you. He saved me. We, brethren of the church of the living God, we are the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you understand that? Okay? The Lord in us gives witness unto the lost. And like, I, like in the previous video, my wife just standing there looking at a loaf of bread and other these lost worldly women. It's like, uh, uh, and me just standing there uh, doing nothing and being around these uh, world people. They're like, oh, get all freaked out and stuff. Why? Because we are the testimony of the Lord. Okay? We are his testimony. Okay? We are as close of a testimony that most of these people are ever going to get. And that's why, too, when you're out there, brother, sister, I'm going to drill this into your head until you're sick of it, and it's coming out your nose. Carry a sword. You're going out to the mailbox, taking out the trash. I don't give a rap, okay? Carry a sword all the time. Don't leave home without it. Okay? Don't leave home without one. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Dear brother, the question needs to be asked. Are you ashamed of the testimony of our Lord? No! Then, then why are you making excuses? Why aren't you fulfilling what God has called you to do? And you say that God called you to do nothing? You're lying. You're lying to yourself and you're offending the Lord. You're, you're d disobeying. You're not doing what uh, Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 tells us okay you have not been called onto inactivity but to supreme activity okay be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our lord nor of me his prisoner but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of god okay track slapped out of your hands pop threw it on you Put, uh, you know, take him to the police station. Come on. Who has saved us and called us with unholy calling. Not according to our works. Works of the law. Okay. But according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles, for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. You're not ashamed of the Lord, are you? Oh, I know. No. Then why aren't you doing anything for the Lord? 
like I said, it doesn't have to be this. It doesn't have to be that. It doesn't have to be... The Lord's the one who's going to guide you. Here's something for you to consider. Are you not walking according to the scriptures, but say, I'm going to walk however I'm going to walk? And the Lord has put you on the shelf? Like what is talked about in 1 Corinthians chapter 5? To hand one over to the destruction of, uh, to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus? Huh? You, you walking according to the scriptures, brother, sister? Is that why you're inactive? If that be the case, you got bigger fish to, uh, <laughs> you got bigger problems. You need to get that figured out with the Lord right away. Okay? This playtime's over, boy. Quit you like men. Come on. For the, for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Committed unto him. What? Our total and complete abandonment and trust on him. Okay? And now go to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. Back to Acts. Back to Acts. Acts chapter 16. Okay? Acts chapter 16, verses 6 on to verse 10. Now, when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, the wind and the sail, guided by the Lord. I almost used this in the previous video, but the Lord's like, no, I want you to use it in this one. It's like, okay, okay. But see, the wind and the sail, the wind and the sail. The Lord is the one who guides our witness and testimony. Okay? It's the Lord, not us. Okay? For all seek their own, not the things that be of Christ. Okay? We seek the things of Christ. We are to be eternally minded. And see right here? Okay? The Holy Ghost. Okay? And we're forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Okay? Uh, don't go that way. Go this way. Don't, don't talk to those people. They're not going to hear you. I want you to go this way and keep your eyes open because something's going to happen, okay? After they were come to Mysa, they essayed to go into Bithynia. It's like, okay, let's go to Bithynia. Come on. But the Spirit suffered them not. So see, they're like, okay, I want, I want to personally, and this is something that uh, I've only done it once, um, I want to go track cop cars. Right down the road, there's the McHenry County Court building, which is a beautiful place to track, especially on weekdays. And, you know, but I, I, I want to so bad start putting tracks in cop cars. <laughs> I do. But uh, now, I, I, I kind of chicken out on that. I will, I will, you know, I will admit that. But, you know, that seems, that's something I want to do. But there again, it's like, no, Brad. Okay, good, good, because sometimes, you know, sometimes, even though they, they really probably wouldn't do much to me, but, you know, with, with the way police are nowadays, unfortunately, and the bad rap that they have gotten, unfortunately, you know, but see, you might want to do something. After they were come to Mysa, they essayed to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not, okay? The Lord guided them. And they, passing by Mysa, came down to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia, and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel on to them. The wind in the sail was guiding go that way, don't go that way, but I want you to go this way. It's like, okay, that's the way you want us to go? We're going. We're doing it. Okay? Gotta get out of that boat, brother, sister. Okay? And uh, Acts 17, verse 28, one verse. You know, okay, now you look that over again. 
The Lord was clearly guiding them. Okay? Clearly. The Lord will clearly guide you in your witness and testimony. Okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay? Uh, like it says in Romans chapter 12, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Who are you proving that to? To yourself? Or to those who may see by either, because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But when they won't hear your words, your physical testimony, the way you behave. And you know what, brethren? Sometimes you don't have sometimes you don't have to do anything. Okay? Okay? But verse 28. For in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of one of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Okay? In him we live. In him we have our being. Jesus Christ is our all. Okay? He is the one who leads. He is the one who guides. Okay? And uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4. Uh, oh, wait, wait. Is that 1 Timothy chapter 4? Um, no, I think it was 2 Timothy chapter 4. Excuse me. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Yes. <laughs> it wasn't 1 Timothy chapter 4, was it? No. <laughs> no. No, it was 2 Timothy chapter 4. I wrote down uh, 1 for some reason. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 5. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick, the alive, and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Okay? Th shut up! Shut up with your excuses. Okay, whether you're going to do it by word or being having a, ch a chase or, and being discreet and being of a meek and quiet spirit. Okay, all right. Yeah, women. Yes, ladies, sisters. You're not supposed to preach like men. That's given to men. But your witness, your chaste, discreet conversation, meek and quiet spirit, drives the lost people and especially lost women crazy. <laughs> My wife can testify to that. Okay? So, shut up with your excuses. I love you. I love you. Shut up. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall he shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things. Mind your P's and Q's there, brother, sister. Okay? Endure afflictions, obviously. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Make full proof of thy ministry. Do the work of an evangelist. Okay? Okay? And what does that mean? Okay? Uh, Acts chapter 5, verses 38 and 39. Okay? Acts chapter 5, verses 38 and 39. So many people want to get rid of me, by the way. As so many people want to get rid of you too, brother, sister. But here's the thing. Acts, Acts chapter 5, verses 38 and 39. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. Just like all the devils here uh, that attack the brethren here on YouTube and on other platforms with their hundreds of channels. Their work is the work of men. And it shows in how they and what they do. It's not of the Lord. Because there's no edification. There's no instruction. It's all attack. Okay? But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it. Lest happily ye be found against the fight ye against God. Do you realize that holds true for you too, brother, sister? 
You can only quench the spirit of the Lord so long in you as the church of the living God for you reap heavy consequences. You, you do realize that, don't you? Okay. The Lord took everything away from me personally a couple of years ago in order to bring me to this place now. He took me out of the secular workforce. He took, uh, he took us out of that home that we used to live in and brought us here where we are totally dependent on him. Okay? All right? All right? Because I didn't want to do what he wanted me to do. But he's like, okay, Brad, I'm going to make it really hard for you to go on without me. Meaning doing what he wanted me to do. Okay? All right? Now go to Romans chapter 1. So the video is a little bit longer than I anticipated it to be, but that's, that's okay. I, I told my wife that this would probably be the shorter of the three, but it's not up to me. Okay? Romans chapter 1, verses 7, on to verse 17. Okay. And about 1 Timothy, you might be saying, well, those people, that's Timothy. There are certain people called to do this. I haven't been called to do nothing. Shut up. <coughs> Shut up. Be quiet. I love you. Be quiet. You know what you're called to be? Verse 7. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. Saints. Now see, right away, what happens? You think of a saint because of the scumbag devil church Roman Catholicism. You think a saint is someone that is exalted, right? Uh, sinless, that kind of stuff. You're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. Yes, you. Yes, you. You are a saint. Okay? But see... Because of what Satan hath done through his church, Roman Catholicism, we automatically, when we think of saint, we think something totally opposite of what a saint is. A saint is someone who is right with the Lord. Okay? Okay? We're called to be saints. Okay? You are a saint. If you're saved, you are a saint. You might, uh, you, you sin daily. Okay? You, you, you do. You sin daily. But you're a saint. You've called to be a saint. Okay? Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Your faith. Hmm? And how is that going to be happening if you're not out there demonstrating living your faith? Every day. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. Amen. Making request, if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. To the end, ye may be established. See, it wasn't about Paul, okay? He was eternally minded. He was saying he had the things of Christ, not of vain glory, okay? For other people, okay? I don't do this because it's for me. This is what the Lord has called me to do for other people, okay? That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I proposed to come unto you, but was let hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am a debtor, both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. Yes, we're a debtor to these lost people in that we are, we have the truth living within us. And because of that, we need to share that with others. Okay? So much so, as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, uh, of Christ, 
the NIV takes out. You're trying to follow along in an NIV. It says the gospel doesn't there, doesn't it? It doesn't say of Christ, does it? Yeah. What gospel? Hmm? For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. The Greek is a Gentile. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith in what God was going to do under the Old Testament, under the law, to faith, it is finished, okay? As it is written, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith, dear brother, dear sister, okay? You've been called. You, you've gone the way, to the, uh, the way of the cross. You've been called of God, the way of the cross. You're saved, born, converted, Born again, converted of the church of the living God. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. You've been called onto something, brother, sister. Time is short. Time is running out. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Of course, we, we couldn't, uh, when talking about this, we could not avoid this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Okay? <laughs> Verse 11 again. Okay? Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we are debtors to these people. We know what's coming. They, hey, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, that's their problem. Okay? Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Okay? Now, verses 17 on to the close of the chapter of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Okay? You are in the ministry of reconciliation, brother, sister. Now we as men, we are the ones to be the teachers and the, the preachers. Yes, but you women, you sisters out there, don't you for a minute, okay? I, I, I can get my wife in here and she could be like, oh, oh, well, hey, you know, you know, <laughs> you know, tracting is good. And just like I said, being of a meek and quiet, humble spirit, amongst other women, amongst this world, this feministic world. Like I said, I could bring my wife in here, which is not going to happen, but I could bring my wife in here and she could testify to you herself. Okay? You're in the Ministry of Reconciliation. Okay? All right? Don't forget that. Okay? To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Okay? Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. First Corinthians chapter 15. Sister, dearly beloved sister. My dear sister. But thanks be to God. Uh, 1 Corinthians 7, uh, 15. 57 and 58. And we're ending it here. Okay? But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, if you're doing it out of your flesh by the flatulent wind of man, 
Yes, it's in vain, like all the Christians do. But if it's of the Lord, your labor is not in vain. Do the work. We have, do the work that you have been called on to. doesn't matter who you are. You have been called on to something. Do it. Do it. I have an assignment for you. Okay? On your own time. Seriously. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 12 today. Some of you, this might be the most scripture you've read in a week. Why? Why? You've made it this long in this video? Read 1 Corinthians chapter 12 today. Slowly. Out loud. Who cares who's listening? Read 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I like that saying, what happens when the church of the living God does nothing? What happens when, the saying is what happens when good men don't act. The saying is nothing. The Lord doesn't need us to be a witness for himself. No, he doesn't. But see, we have been called on to good works. And those good works are being ambassadors for Christ in whatever position he has put you in, male or female, it doesn't matter. You're in the Ministry of Reconciliation. Halloween is almost upon us. Around here in these parts, they had the Halloween de decorations out at the end of August. What are you doing? Do something, brother, sister. Do something. That is going to be it for this video. Like I said, this went a little bit longer than I had anticipated, but that's okay. That's okay. You need to hear this. You need to be reminded of this. Okay? Thank you for watching this if you do. Make sure you watch the first video. And also, uh, while watching the verse, first video, check out that comment by our dear brother. He gets this. Okay? Another good example to you, brethren, of getting out there and doing as we have been called to do, being ambassadors for our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Anyway, hopefully this will prick your heart and you'll start doing what the Lord has called you to do. If you want to remain inactive, you're still going to go to heaven. But you're, what, are you ashamed of our Lord? Are you ashamed of the gospel? Or are you just glorifying yourself? Or you think you're, uh, you're saying, you, by you saying I'm not good enough, you're too good, right? Going to get this uploaded? Thank you so much for watching this if you do. We love you. We are praying for you. Please pray for the brethren and the sisters who, um, who know, but yet still, still have a little fear. Don't be afraid. You have to have faith that if you do as the Lord will have you to do, his purposes will come. But more on that in the next one.